new baby is an exciting addition to the family. But there are problems, too. He's always asleep. When's he ever going to be any fun? All he ever does is eat and sleep. Yes, eat and sleep. And that's just about all you did, too, when you were a baby. You had to depend on your mother for all the things that you needed. She had to feed you, to bathe you, to put you down to sleep. As you grow older, you learn to do more and more things for yourself. Some of these things you do so often that they become habits. Everybody has habits. Dad likes to read his newspaper every evening in this same chair. It's one of his habits. Habits are things you do naturally without having to think about them. Martha first had to think each step when she tied a bow knot. Now she can do it easily and quickly. Regular habits make daily living much easier since they help us do things without having to think about them. Some of the habits you learn now may stay with you all your life. All right, children. It's time to get ready for bed. I'm almost through with this chapter, Mother. It's time for bed, Susie. You go right to sleep now. Getting ready for bed at a regular time is one of the most important habits you can learn. A quiet hour or two before bedtime is part of this habit. It makes you feel relaxed and sleepy, ready for bed. Washing up is part of the going to bed habit. Any regular routine before bedtime helps you feel sleepy. Hanging up your clothes can be part of this routine. They'll air out overnight and be neat for tomorrow. Wearing the right kind of night clothes is important. David's pajamas fit him loosely and don't bind him around the waist. David likes to open his window, when it isn't too cold, for fresh air, but he's careful not to sleep in a draft. Of course, Martha has her own habits. Instead of opening her window, she gets fresh air by opening her door a bit. Good night, David. Good night, sis. David's bed is comfortable and the mattress isn't too soft. The covers on his bed are warm without being heavy. And so David's ready for bed at just about the usual time. Of course, he sometimes stays up later, but that doesn't happen often enough to change his going to bed habits. Now to sleep. Some people go right to sleep, others take longer. Because David has regular sleeping habits, he usually drops off very quickly. David has probably never stopped to think what a wonderful thing sleep is. In sleep, the muscles of the body are relaxed. It's the most perfect way to relax that we have. Our breathing is slower and deeper when we sleep. The body's temperature is lower. Even the heart beats more slowly. The whole body is resting. To rest all our muscles, we turn in our sleep. Some people turn often, others not so often, but we all do it. It's a normal part of sound, healthy sleep. Dreams are normal too. Often they're suggested by things around us while we sleep. don't seem to make much sense, do they? That's because the brain is resting along with the body, so it's less alert when you sleep.
after a good night's sleep, you usually wake up easily and naturally. The alarm hasn't rung yet. David finds that he usually wakes up before it goes off. Of course, it takes him a little while to get fully awake. You're never at your best until at least an hour or two afterwards. That's one reason why getting up early is so important. There's plenty of time for breakfast, too. Breakfast is an important meal that shouldn't be missed. If you usually go to bed early enough, you usually wake up early, too. You can start the day in a pleasant, unhurried way. It's more fun for you that way, and more fun for the rest of the family, too. David and Martha enjoy their mornings, and that helps them enjoy the whole day. As the day goes on, you get more and more value from your regular sleeping habits. Plenty of sleep helps you to be bright and alert to the very end of the day. But what about bad sleeping habits? George just doesn't get enough sleep. And now in the afternoon, he's tired. It's hard for him to pay attention in class. When the teacher calls on him, George just can't seem to remember things that he really ought to know. George doesn't realize it, but his main trouble is bad sleeping habits. Last night, for instance. No, no, Muggsy. Don't rub me out. I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. No rat's gonna squeal on me. You know too much, Limpy. You know I wouldn't sing, Muggsy. We've been pals too long. Slats saw you in the DA's office. Sure, I was there, but, but, but they didn't get nothing out of me. Then why was the coppers around here today? I don't know, Muggsy. I don't know. You squealed, that's why. You put the finger on me. You can't do it, Muggsy. You can't. You can't. Oh. Oh. Yes, George has bad sleeping habits. And even when he finally does get into bed, he finds it hard to go to sleep. That's because he hasn't formed the habit of going to sleep at a regular time each night. And it's just as hard for him to wake up in the morning. George! George! Get up, George! He's still tired because he hasn't had enough sleep. The morning starts badly, and the whole day goes badly when you get too little sleep too often. And even after class is over, you keep on paying the penalty for bad sleeping habits. You don't have much fun when you're tired and low in energy. Lack of sleep makes it hard for you to do your best. You just can't seem to get into the game and have fun the way the other fellows do. You're irritable and cross, hard to get along with. People don't like you, and you don't like yourself when you're like that. Probably neither David nor George realize how important their sleeping habits are to the way they enjoy their waking hours. Going to bed at a regular time each night makes it easier for you to go right off to sleep instead of lying awake long into the night. You wake up easily and naturally without having to be dragged out of bed. And most important, your day starts right and stays right. Both David and Martha have learned that good sleeping habits help you get the most out of everyday living.